In order to understand the concepts of density presented in this video, you have to know the legend of Archimedes, the famous Greek mathematician born in 287 BC. According to legend, King Hero II of Syracuse asked Archimedes to determine if the crown that he received from a goldsmith was indeed made of the gold that he had given to him. The king suspected it was made of a cheaper metal that the goldsmith had replaced in the crown, and he had pocketed the gold for himself. Archimedes' plan was to find the density of the crown. Finding the mass is easy, he can just weigh it, but finding the volume was a bit more difficult because the crown had a weird irregular shape, unlike a sphere or a cube, which has perfect edges which you can measure. The crown has a very odd shape and that made it really difficult for Archimedes. So the legend goes, one day Archimedes was sitting in a bathtub and as the water overflowed, he had a revelation and cried Eureka, which is Greek for I found it, as he ran through the streets naked. What he had determined was that the volume of water that had overflowed or had been displaced was equal or proportional to the volume of the crown. Archimedes eventually compared the density of the crown to the density of pure gold and found out that the density of the crown was much less, therefore proving that the goldsmith had replaced the gold in the crown with a cheaper alloy or cheaper metal, and the goldsmith was punished by King Hero II. We'll make use of Archimedes' principle today by doing a lab where we have to figure out the density of clay. The thing about clay is that it's shaped weird, kind of like a human body, kind of like the crown. You can't measure the edges of the human body and determine its volume. So you'll have to use Archimedes' principle, which means you have to measure uh, the, the amount of water that's displaced and that's how you can figure out the volume of your object. Finding the mass again is very easy, you just have to put it on a scale. Its volume is slightly different, you have to measure the water's displacement to do that. For trial number one, you have to find out the mass of your sample of clay, it turns out to be 15.08 grams. So this is where we use Archimedes' principle to find the volume of our clay. We're actually going to use the displacement of water. So you can see there, it's initially at 26 milliliters. And when I put my clay in, uh, the volume of the water rises to 35. So you could say that the volume of the clay is a total of 9 milliliters because it displaced 9 milliliters of water. And you can see here again, okay, we start at 26, put it in, and now the water level rises to 35. Okay, so some quick arithmetic would tell you that the volume of clay is 9. Alright, so let's put this together. Again, our equation is D equals M over V, mass divided by volume. So in the previous clip, we found out that the mass was 15.08 grams and that the volume was 9 milliliters. So if you go 15.08 divided by 9, you should get 1.7 grams per milliliter as the clay's density. And, you know, ask yourself, does it make sense? And it should because we know, we understand that the density of water is 1, and because the clay sinks, and you got an answer of 1.7, that sounds reasonable, and the answer makes a lot of sense. So on to our second trial. We're going to take our mass. This is a smaller sample, and it turns out to be 7.12 grams. Once again, we'll use Archimedes' principle. The initial volume of the water is 19. Put the clay in. Now it's at 24. You can infer that the volume of the clay is 5 milliliters. So once again, going back to our equation, density equals mass over volume, m divided by v. We get 7.12 grams, which we found was the mass of the clay, divided by the volume of the clay, which was 5 milliliters, and we get an answer of 1.42 grams per milliliters. And then you ask yourself, does it sound reasonable? And it should because in our first trial we got around 1.7. So 1.42 because this is an experimental trial. There's a little bit of error okay, in how we read the, the volume of the water. There could have been some weird error with the scale, who knows. But 1.42 is in the same neighborhood as 1.7 in trial 1. So we could say that our answer is reasonable. And also 1.42 is a number bigger than 1. And because the clay sank, uh, that would seem to make sense. I've done trials one and two for you. Make sure you show your work for that and you fill in the data table with your calculations. 
Uh, for problems three, four, and five, again, you have to find out what the volume of your clay is and then divide it uh, into the mass of the clay to find its density. Make sure you show your work in the boxes below before you continue on uh, to the next part, which is extra practice with density equations. So I'll meet you guys there. Let's dive into uh, some of the practice problems on the back of your notes. This is number one, a foam ball with a density of 4.56 grams per milliliters has a mass of 3.45 grams. What's its volume? Okay, so I'm gonna list out all the variables, make it really nice and organized. Okay, so we are being asked to solve for V in this case. So our equation is D equals M over V, but I'm gonna circle V because that's what you're being asked to solve for. So I'll circle V and we're gonna solve for this algebraically. Okay, we're gonna multiply both sides by V. So now what we get is V times D equals M. And because we're solving for V, I'll circle it again. I need to divide both sides by density, divide both sides by D. So our new equation that we wanna use is V equals M over D, and we can start plugging in, right? So for mass, plug in 3.45 grams. For density, plug in 4.56 grams per milliliters. And I'll switch colors here to see how the units will cancel out. So grams will cancel out. You're left with milliliters, which is perfect because milliliters is a unit of volume. And our answer is 0.757 milliliters. In problem number two, you're given the mass of cork, which is 4.59 grams. So let's write that down. Our volume is 5.78 milliliters. And now they're asking you to solve for the density. This one turns out to be a little bit more straightforward because the equation is there. You don't have to rearrange the equation. It's already in order. So D equals M over V. You're given both mass and volume, which makes it really easy. You just need to plug in at this point. So plug in for M, 4.59 grams. Plug in for V, volume, 5.78 milliliters. And you'll see here the units don't cancel out because you're being asked to solve for density, which is mass per unit volume. And our answer is 0.794 grams per milliliters. In problem three, let's see what we're given. We're given volume is 10 milliliters. We are given the density of our rock, which is 3.87 grams per milliliters. And they want you to solve for the mass of this rock. Okay, now you could solve for it algebraically, but I'll show you what some people consider to be a shortcut. This is known as the density triangle. And if you wanna use a triangle, you have to put density in the lower left corner, mass always goes up top, and then volume in the lower right corner. Okay, so because you're being asked to solve for M, I'm gonna circle it. And it turns out, okay, uh, we're gonna plug in D and V because they're both given and they're right next to each other, which means you multiply. Okay, so let's draw the triangle again. All right, so M is what you wanna solve for. D was given as 3.87, V was 10. So you only have to multiply these two numbers because they're side by side in the triangle. So this turns out to be 38.7 grams for your answer. And then we'll revisit problem number one using the triangle as well. Thanks for tuning in and watching the lessons on density. Make sure you complete the rest of the problems and that you show all work. Your work has to be handwritten. And when you're ready to submit your work online, make sure you include your ID photos somewhere in the picture. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Win Chemistry.